Good morning and welcome to this week's episode of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be um, available for you to watch later at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to for anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, whoever you think would be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, because I do know we have people registered today who are um, not Nebraska libraries, um, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, so similar to your, um, so whatever state library. Um, so we provide services and training and resources to all types of libraries in the state. So we have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies. Really our only criteria is it something to do with libraries. Um, cool things libraries are doing, cool things we think they could be doing. <laughs> um, we have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things happen on the show. Uh, we bring in guest speakers sometimes to talk on Encompass Live from um, all across the country, uh, from Nebraska or across the country, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us. Um, and that's what we have today. Um, today is also the the last Wednesday of the month, so it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Yay! Uh, that is the um, always the last Wednesday of the month. Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on the show and talks about something tech related. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Um, we do have shows on other times during the month, you know, other dates that are also techy as well. Um, just depends on what we get on the schedule. But you can always depend on the last Wednesday of the month. Amanda joins us with something tech. So if you are your tech person at your library, or you're just into that kind of thing, and you wanna learn more about it, um, sign up for her last Wednesday of the month shows. And today she's gonna to talk about WordPress. Um, this is something a lot of libraries, a lot of people use for their um, websites. Um, I don't know where you're gonna talk about our uh, Nebraska libraries on the web, web a little bit as related to this, or? Yeah, I could give a little blurb like, and yeah, that's that we um, we host library websites for libraries on web on through WordPress on WordPress. I don't know what's the right terminology. You explain it. <laughs> <laughs> so we do host. So right now the commission is hosting approximately 140 library websites through the host server. So through mm -hmm. the Nebraska Libraries on the Web program, you actually get free WordPress web hosting using a libraries.ne.gov slash your city name URL. You can feel free, if you own your own URL already, you can feel free to forward it over. It'll be just like a regular website. And so since we provide the hosting backup and troubleshooting for it, all you do is pretty much update, maintain the site. So if you do need new web hosting, or if you don't like your old hosting, or if you just want to try something new, come on over. All you have to do is send me an email at amanda.sweet at nebraska.gov. Let me know that you want to start um, Nebraska Libraries on the web. We'll go through a little planning session, and then I can help you get the site set up, or if you're already used to it, you can take over, and all I'll do is set up the blank site for you. So you have options. Yeah. And, and I'm just it's setting free up a few libraries, too. That's, I think a big thing. it's free. It doesn't cost anything. We yeah. overall cost related to it. So it just takes your time to um, get set up and then keep um, updating, you know, maintaining your site. Yeah. Yeah. The only cost you would possibly have is if you have your own URL, but that's usually only like 15 or $20 a year. It's super cheap yeah. and you yeah. don't need to do that. And then if you choose to get any additional plugins like the Elementor Pro, then we would ask that you pay for the premium plugin because mm -hmm. we just use the regular one, because not everyone uses that. Mm -hmm. So that's the only cost you might incur through that. 
Yeah. So reach out to Amanda, look on our website for the Nebraska Libraries on the Web, web Info. We've got a whole page about it too. Yeah. All right, so today we are talking about Elementor. This is true. So I have got I just grabbed a website that I'm actually in the middle of setting up right now. And I'm gonna it's gonna be the same basic layout for any library that's set up. So whether you're using Nebraska Libraries on the web or your own WordPress installation. This installation is going to look like the WordPress.org installation because we have our own, our stuff is self-hosted. And if you go through a cloud hosting, it might just look a tiny touch different, but the same process will be the same. So I am going to dig into responsive layout. So the whole main purpose of this webinar here is to make it so that you can have clean, crisp, awesome layouts, but have it look good when you're on a desktop, tablet, and smartphone size screen. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole purpose of responsive layout because a good chunk of people are going to be looking at your library website using their smartphone. And when you try the biggest offenders of responsive layout on a library website are your calendar, because when it squishes down into a small layout, people can't read anything. And it looks like teeny tiny boxes on a screen, or it looks like um, half of it's cut off. One of the most common things is if it's loaded in as an image, people might only see like one row or two of that calendar. So it's easier to actually make it display as a full calendar on a desktop screen but then make it look like a list on other screens. Um, so if you're loading it on mobile, it'll look like a list. So the easiest way to show you how to do that is to go and um, do it. So I'm gonna go into pages and then I'm going to add a page. I should mention while you're doing that, and that's loading up. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, I didn't mention at the beginning throughout the show. Um, at any time, go ahead and type into the questions section in your GoToWebinar interface. I'm monitoring that here, and I can grab the questions from Amanda um, whenever you have them. So um, don't wait or forget. We don't have to hold questions to the end. When you think of something, if you're seeing something in the screen that you're unsure about or confused about, or you want to know more about. Um, or if you want to share something you've done, if you've used Elementor, cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Go ahead and type into that questions section in your GoToWebinar interface at any time. And so I clicked the, I started the page, I gave it a little title, and then I clicked the Edit with Elementor button. So if this is your first time using Elementor, it will ask you to click that button to switch from the Gutenberg editor over to the Elementor editor. And this is what the Elementor editor looks like if you haven't seen it before. So this is the, the title that just popped in. And then this is your empty block. And I'm dragging my go to webinar setting out of the way so I can actually get to the scroll bar down here. There it is. So this is where you would add in new content. So if you hit the plus sign here, it's going to ask you which layout style you want. And to give a kind of a description of what Flexbox versus Grid is, is these are some new styling layouts that are really common in website design right now. So the Flexbox, you can see that you have greater control over where items show up in both rows and columns. So you don't actually have to have everything lined up if you don't want it to. You can actually, it, most of this grid goes on like a 12 box layout when you're doing regular programming. So you can say this element is going to fill up three blocks, three blocks wide, and it's going to be as tall as it needs to be to fill that space. So this would mean that you want more flexibility over both your rows and columns. And the grid layout means that you want everything lined up. 
you have a whole bunch of different cards or images, they're all the same size and you want them to be perfectly lined up, evenly spaced and in a grid. So we're going to use Flexbox right now. And I'm just going to choose, so this next question is going to ask is, how many sections across you want it to be? So a lot of libraries have been asking, can they make their own custom sidebar for each different page? And in Elementor, you actually can. So you would be able to choose this, uh, this layout here so that you have one wide column and then one narrow column. And you can put your custom sidebar inside of this narrow column. And that would look like, so right now, this narrow column is on the left side, but you can also adjust it by using this little drag and drop thing and flip it over. So now I'm making it, if you, you might be able to see the little percentage sign on here when I slide over, but you can actually set it to fill an exact percentage of that screen. So I'm going to do about 65%, give or take. And then I'm going to click on this little plus sign and we'll go over to, I said I was going to show the calendar. So I'm actually going to, I have like a little embed code from a calendar from a different library. So I'm actually going to borrow that and pull it into WordPress here. And I'm going to pause the screen share because I need to go into my email. <laughs> and let me grab, copy and paste that little code snippet. Honestly, I don't have anything really contentious in my email. I probably should could have just kept it up, but whatever. It's always good to play it safe. You never know because we are recording. And <laughs> oh, and of course, this little little code snippet is way down in the bottom of the email thread. You know, I'm just going to go to the calendar where it's already at. That will be easier. So I'm going to reshare my screen. Okay. And you can let me know when you see it. Yep, it's back up again in the Elementor. Yep. Perfect. So I'm just going to jump into the library that already has it. And that is gearing. Yes, I'm going to leave the page. It'll be okay. <laughs> and loading, loading, loading. There we go. Pages, all pages. And I'm going to grab the calendar. Edit with Elementor. And it's loading very, very slow.
Of course it is. <laughs> there you go. Those are, oh, I like there. So this is what the calendar looks like now. And you'll see that this layout actually has two calendars, one on top of the other. So this is actually how you set up that responsive layout. So let me click on this. And this is actually an HTML code snippet that got put into here. So this is being set to a responsive setting in here. And now if we go into responsive, so that is where you can see you would set up the one block that has the calendar setting and another block that has the list setting. And then you would hide it on the tablet and mobile and then display it on the desktop. So now the reason that this isn't showing, like it's not reflecting that in here is because because it's an HTML code snippet, it's not giving the same block, it's not giving the same editing functionality. But this is actually where you would go into this advanced and then the responsive layout to be able to change the visibility of each different section. And let me go down here. So this is what would show up on mobile. And so we click on this, go into advanced, and go into responsive. So you see that this section is hidden on desktop and tablet, and it only shows up in mobile. So you can test this by going into responsive mode down here. So now responsive mode, it will let you click through your different display settings. So let's go over into mobile and now this is going to be what people see on your mobile screen so now you can adjust the width of what this would look like so that it's not going to be cut off for people and it's already defaulted to the size of so elementor when you first open up this responsive layout setting it's already defaulted to the pixel width of the standard screen size. So because you can't possibly know the exact pixel width of every single one of your patrons de like devices, this is kind of like a happy medium so that things just look okay. And like it defaults to a 360 pixel width and a 651 pixel height. But because I have like a the ultra version, my phone's going to be a little bit larger. So playing it safe and using this smaller width setting just makes it look better on all on all different devices. And it does the same thing for every single different device. It gives the median range of what each different layout will look like. And then it also does that for desktop. But you'll see that this is grayed out and this is actually what appears. So when you want to set up a responsive layout, you would set out what it will look like on desktop. Then you would add a new block that says what it would look like on mobile. And then you would go into the settings and advanced and responsive layout and then just hide what you don't want to show up on desktop, hide what you don't want to show up on tablet, and only display what's on mobile, and then do the reverse for the calendar. And now I'm going to go out of here. And for whatever weird reason, and I don't know why Elementor is set up in this way, but to get out of Elementor, you actually have to click on this little three line, three line thing and click on exit. And I'm going to go back into Nebraska 
city because that site isn't live yet. So whatever we do, I can still delete it before it actually goes to the public. And that loaded faster. I'll take it. So I'm going to go back into add new page. And we're going to do a few different styles of layout. So the next one is going to be a gallery. So I'm going to do edit with Elementor. This is what takes a second. So as a fun fact, if you forget to add a title before you click add um, edit with Elementor, it's going to generate a weird random set of numbers and letters as a title. And then this that weird random set of numbers and letters is going to be what shows up in, across the top. And then you'll actually have to go back and change that title in a bunch of different places. So it's easier for you if you remember to add that title and then click on Edit with Elementor just to save the headache later. So to get a gallery, it's actually way easier. So I'm going to just choose this default flex box again. I'll grab this one direction column, which means it's going to fill up the entire space. I'll hit this plus sign here. And then I'm going to scroll down until I find basic gallery. So drag this over here. So the most common places that you'll wind up using this is if you, a lot of libraries use it to upload book cover images and make a gallery of the new materials that they have coming in. So I usually do kind of a default of three images across and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to add images here and upload file. Select files. And I'm going to grab some random images that were already on my laptop. Normally, you'd grab the book covers for the actual books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was half hoping I would scroll down here and find a whole bunch of book cover images because that actually oh, happened. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't see any loaded in, so I'm just going to use these. I saw some cats and dogs. Yeah. There, there. there we go. We're going to have a cat gallery. <laughs> I truly could not tell you why I have a whole bunch of Oh wait, I remember. I was loading, I was training a machine learning model to recognize different cats and dogs, and I needed image examples of cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> so let me open these, and these are going to load into our gallery. Oh, here's a cute little fuzz ball. My grandma's cat was actually the slack and gray tabby cat, so I would love that cat. All right, so now once these are all loaded in, this create new gallery button will go from grayed out to active in blue. So you'll click on create new gallery. It'll ask you to verify that these are the images that you want to insert into the gallery. You can close out any if you accidentally put it in the wrong spot. And you can also drag and drop the order because the order that they appear on this screen is the order that they're going to appear on your site. So say that we want to group the dogs and the cats together, we can do that. And then we go to insert gallery.
And it'll take a little bit to get all the images loaded into the layout. So now we can kind of adjust our settings to say, let's just say that we want this to actually take the actual full width of the screen and we want to be able to get rid of this little sidebar section. We can do that by going into settings and page layout down here, and then one column, no sidebar. And then that will make this little side panel disappear so that it takes up the entire space. And then assuming that you don't want this to be all squished into the corner. So right now it's defaulted so that when you click on each different image, it'll open up a larger version of that image. So people can get a close up of your book covers, make it easier to read the text and make it easier to kind of navigate through that. But we are going to switch this from thumbnail over to large. And then this will take a second. So now this is taking the full width of the page. And you can also take the, if you click on this little six pack of dots that go, goes over the top, you can also change it from box to full width. And now that will take up even more space on that page. And now I'm going to click back into the space here. And you have your options to be able to change it from one across or two across or however many you want to do. But three is just a happy medium so that each image isn't massive and people can actually see what's on there. But depending on the image, you might want to adjust that. I'm just kind of giving you your options of what you can actually change. And you can also insert captions into each one of these different images by adding the caption when you upload the image. So that's why it's asking you if you don't want the caption to display at all or if you want the attachment catchment caption to display. And cool. And right now where it says that the link is going to the media file, what that means is that when you click on this cat, it's going to link over to the full media file so that you see the bigger picture. And here we go. So you can also do cool stuff like rounding out the edges or changing like the space in between each different photo. But for the most part, I just leave that as default. But depending on what you're actually doing, that, that might be something you actually want to change. But I'm just going to leave it. Let's give it 10 pixels in between. Yeah, it's always fun sometimes when you have time to play around with some of those default settings and see if there's a uh, something that just aesthetically makes you happier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do that. I, I can sometimes get so lost in, oh, but what if I make this one a nut, one pixel bigger or the, right. the, the spacing yeah. or, yeah, and the rounding of the edges, that's always fun to make it look a little like, yeah. Yeah, I like it. And then eventually I have to say, I'm done, stop, it's fine. <laughs> Back away from the computer. Yes. <laughs> and so then we go into our responsive and make sure that this actually looks the way that we want it to look. So now this is where the responsive layout comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's because our three column layout looks awesome when we're on desktop, and it looks pretty good when we're on tablet. tablet. But when we get down into mobile, it is kind of small to see. Like these are going to look like really tiny little thumbnail images once you get down to that gallery. So the quickest way that we can do something about this is to actually right click on this little six pack thing and hit duplicate. So now I duplicated this entire thing right underneath it. And now I'm going to click on. So fun fact, when you're click, usually when you go into Elementor, you click on the thing that you want to change so that you can update the settings. But if you click on a gallery, it, if you click on an image itself, it's by default going to open up that image. 
So you actually want to click on the empty white space in the gallery to get to the settings. Otherwise, you're just going to have giant cats every time. So now we want this to show one across on mobile. So now I changed it to one. And I'm going to go into the advanced settings. And I'm going to go down into responsive layout. And I want this, I don't want the one across setting to show on desktop. So I'm going to hide it. I want to hide it on tablet. And I only want it to show on mobile. So now I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to click in the empty white space so I can change the settings here. And now I'm going to go back into this advanced section, go down into responsive. And now I'm going to hide on mobile. And now this section is only showing on desktop and tablet. So now when we go back over into our responsive mode, now our preview for desktop is going to show this displayed. And when we go down, I have to drag my go to meeting settings out of the way so I can get to the scroll bar. So now when I scroll this down, oh, my go to meeting is still in the way. You can I'm use, use, arrow key. And use the orange arrow maybe just to make the smaller bar on go to meeting or go and to web. I just use the arrow key to scroll down instead yeah. of the so now when it's grayed out, this is not going to show on the setting. But when we click over into mobile, now it's showing one across. So much better. Yep. Right? <laughs> and our other setting is hidden. And there is tablet. And up yonder. My scroll really does not want to work right now. I think it's, oh, I can't undock this little setting panel to uncover it either. There we go. That's better. So now we have this actually displaying the way that we want it to. All right, so that was the image gallery. And then we can also make it so that Sometimes when you have banner images, the banner images that go across the top can get really, like, if you have font that's locked into the layout, it can get way too small when it's squished into a mobile design. So sometimes you actually want to display completely different images on one layout and then hide them on another layout. So I'm not going to publish this because I don't think Nebraska City needs a gallery full of cats. But I'm going to close out of this and exit. Although, to be fair, who doesn't need a gallery full of cats? Maybe I should publish it. All right, so now we're closing out of this. Then I'll go into pages, add new page. Just for the fun of it, I will show you what happens if you don't add a title here and you just go straight into edit with Elementor, because sometimes you might do that. And now the new Elementor is loading its layout.
and anytime now. There we go. So now Elementor generated its generic Elementor number 66 table. And now we want to generate different images. I'll show you what the grid layout looks like just for the sake of comparison. And I'm going to grab this layout here. So you see that there's a lot more restriction about the types of layouts that you can use in that grid structure. And it's because everything is lined up perfectly and you don't have as much flexibility in being able to display things that are different heights and widths next to one another. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing something like a library of things and you want to be able to display different option categories and you want to make sure that each one of those different blocks is in the exact same different container width and you want more control over how that's displayed then grid is actually a really good option for you because you're not going to run into the issue of accidentally having something look wonky on one area but not so wonky on the other yeah. So that's one area where you might actually want to use grid. Or if you want to build like an Instagram style layout, not using the gallery style, but using this image style, you can also go in and upload an image into each one of these different blocks. And then you'll have greater control over how each individual block is displayed and the image size. So it really depends on what you want to do. Let's grab a cat. So you click on this. So kind of the general steps in Elementor is you click on the plus sign where you want something to land. Go on this left-hand side, choose the type of thing that you want to show up in there. And then you click and drag it over and then the settings will change so that you can adjust what's inside of that block. And then you quickly click on that empty image space and then upload a fresh picture. And now these are going to be like a little bit uneven, but the reason for that isn't because of the layout, it's because the original image size is different. This cat picture size is different than that picture cat picture size. And I'm going to grab one more cat, click on the image, and we'll grab this little dude. So this is why you actually want to make sure that all your original image files are the same size. Because regardless of the layout, even if it's like locking everything into the area that you want it to be in, um, if the original file isn't the same size, it's still not going to display right. So now the reason that I wanted to load everything into each one of these different boxes is because in the flex box layout, you remember that I was able to hover between different columns and that little slider would show up that would let me change the percentage of each different column width. In a grid layout, you can't do that. It's locked in place so that everything is exactly the same width. So when you want to be able to mess around with the width of each different column and have more control over what that looks like, grid is not the one for you. But grid is the one for you if you want it locked into that layout and shape. Mm -hmm. But you can still remove that little sidebar just like we did before. You can go into one column, no sidebar. And you can still make it look really similar, but you just can't adjust that width. And I'm going to add a fresh container, hit the plus sign here. And I'm going to hit this plus sign over here. And now I'm going to grab our flex box again so that we can have an image that goes across the entire top of this section. And now I'm going to grab an image and 
I'll go into private window. And I'm just going to grab a banner image. Normally I would make it, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm yeah. just going to grab one. Here. I really hate demonstrating just grabbing a random banner from online because that's really not a good thing to do. Yeah, I was going to, well, while you work, I was going to mention that this is not how you'd want to do this. You can see that it says Adobe Stock, that particular yeah. one. You know, yeah. if you are looking for actual graphics, either, like you said, make your own, use your own photos, or go to actual sites where you can um, get uh, designs that are freely available on purpose. You know, just don't go and steal someone else's artwork off of the internet. You can't. Yeah. And you can do that, but you should not do that because that's not the acceptable way to do it. There are websites like um, Unsplash um, and other ones that have, uh, if you need artwork that is made particularly, and yeah, Pixabay that is yeah. purposefully out there for um, finding graphics if you are not, um, don't have something to design yourself um, or a photograph of your own. Um, but also we recommend, I see that popped up there too, Canva is a free service you can use. It has a pro version as well, but um, where you can create your own banners and I use it all the time. I know Amanda does. Uh, if you're not a graphic designer and you're trying to do website things or anything graphic wise, um, it's great to pretend that you, <laughs> it kind of makes you a, uh, just enough of a graphic designer without having all that you know experience and education to do some things. Um, that you can do if you don't have the you know ability or budget to hire someone to be a graphic designer for you. So and that was perfect timing because I just got logged into my Canva. Um, no. I might, my password is saved on my desktop, but I'm on my laptop. So I thought I was going to just grab something online, but let's just make it. It takes like two seconds. Yeah, this is a good demo to see this, yeah. So, and it has a lot of those preset formats or, um, to start with, too. Like the right sizing of whatever you want to use on a Facebook um, banner or a Instagram post or something, yeah. And so the traditional size of a banner is usually about 1,200 pixels wide if you're using a fixed with layout. You can make it bigger if you actually want it to fill across the entire screen. But I'm going to grab a create a design and do a custom size. So this bottom left corner, go to custom size. Make sure you're at pixels. Usually that's the default thing. So we're going to go to 1200 wide and 180 high. Some people use 300 pixels high. It depends on how wide you want your little banner thing. So Pixabay or Canva will also have recommended templates that you can use for a banner, but you can also go into Elements and go into Photos, search anything, and then you can go and drag and drop and it will automatically uh, crop out to the size that like you want. So let's grab. The fun part of this is actually finding something that will actually work in a background. So I'm going to grab all right we'll do this a different way. I'm going to grab this one, make sure that it pops into our layout. It'll auto. Oh, I'm in my unpaid Gmail account, so I'm going to grab a free version. Ah, uh, yes, see those little crowns that was on the images. Yeah. You need to have the pro or paid account, but look at all the ones that don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. 
through the commission, we have the paid version, but I logged in through my Gmail because it was easier for me to get the access code. Yeah, I have um, the, my own personal one was that's just um, the unpaid, and I really have not had many trouble finding things that I could use. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's pretty easy to find that. Yeah. And so I'm going to go into File and go to Settings, Show Print Bleed. So I removed the Show Print Bleed, so that would mean that this image went all the way to the edge. So the pro the reason that I said that I would do things differently is because if you were to try to put text over this image right now, it would be incredibly hard to read. Yes. So another way that you can do that is to go into this elements and shapes. And now I'm going to grab a parallelogram, which is this. So we'll grab that. I'm going to resize it so that it's actually the size that will cover up enough space to be able to put in some text. I'll just line it up in here nice. so it looks cool. And now I'm going to grab a text box. I'll add a heading. And I'm just going to grab any random wording. I'll drag it over to where the title is. I'm going to make it bigger because 14 is going to be real small for that. I'm going to change it to horizon because I can. We'll center it up. I like bungee. <laughs> so this is what we were talking about. You can fiddle with it until like the end of time. Yeah. But eventually you just have to use it. There. So now I'm going to download it. So I'll download. And I usually use a PNG. So I'm going to download it here. Once it's downloaded, we'll go back into Elementor, grab the choose image. Upload the file, go to select file, grab our library's rock, wait until it loads, and select it. So if you remember, I said that in the gallery image, you can also add a caption and it will give you a drop down asking if you want to display the caption or not. At the point of uploading the picture, you can also add our caption here. And then you can also add some alternate text so that screen readers are actually able to see what that image says. And alt text is also really good for web scrapers. So when people are going through and they want to build an understanding of what's on your website, um, that alt text is what helps that happen. So you can say libraries rock banner image. So now when you go to select, this pops in. And then you want to make sure that this width is the same width all the, all the way around. So if you're using full width here, you want to be able to make sure that this goes all the way across. And we're going to go to soft and width. So the reason that this is actually shrinking down is because the image that I just made is 1,200 pixels wide. 
but when we go into this box with settings, we found out that the maximum width of the layout that we're actually using is 1600 pixels wide. So when that happens, it means that your image is actually going to shrink down. It's only gonna fill the space of what the, what the image size is available to be filled. So traditionally, when you make a banner image, you actually go by the width of what your layout is instead of the standard. And that's why this little display is looking different. So I'm gonna go back into full width. And go into 1200. It's getting steadily. <laughs> there. And center there. So now I'm going to go into. We want this to actually display differently on a mobile screen versus a um, desktop. So if you were to be able to shrink this down into a smaller into a smaller screen, it's going to start to look really, really, really small. Mm -hmm. So on a mobile screen, we actually want to display a completely different image. So we're going to go back in here. And I'm going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to go into create a new design, create new design, and I'm going to go into custom size. We'll do, so now is where I'm going to grab the average width of the mobile screen is the 360 pixels wide. This is where our width setting is at. So I'm going to grab that 360 pixel number, and then I'm going to grab, let's say 150. We'll just see what that looks like. So now I copied that. We're going to paste it. And now, this is going to get full up across here. This is going to go over here. We're going to bump this font setting up. And we're going to make it giant. There. And now I'm going to grab my circuit as a background. And I'm going to change the order of this so that this goes in the back. There. So realistically, I would fiddle around with this layout until it looks the way that I want it to. Like I would kind of adjust this in. Show more of that background a little bit, yeah. And then bop that down. But let's assume that I did that already. And we're just gonna share, download, download. And now I want to go back into this desktop layout just because it's easier to see. And now I'm going to add a new container. We'll grab this little flex box thing, add a full width layout, hit the plus sign, drag our image over. Now add this little, click on this empty box, upload the file, go to select file, Grab the new library's rock image. And now, library's rock mobile. And I don't always add alt text if it's something that isn't really relevant, if it's just a decorative mm -hmm. image. 
but this is going to be like a heading descriptive image. So mm -hmm. it'll be libraries rock section. Select. And now this is going to go to full. There. So now the reason that this is looking kind of blurred out is because this is saved in 360 pixels wide, but this display is at 1600 pixels. So on the full screen display, that 360 pixels is going to look like a blurred out mess. But when you go over to the mobile, it looks fine. So when you're using the responsive layout, don't worry as much if this version looks really, really blurred out because you're actually going to click on this, go into advanced, and then you're going to hide it when it's on the desktop and tablet. So hide, hide. Now this sizing doesn't matter. It's only gonna show up on mobile. And on mobile, it's awesome. Yeah. So now you're gonna click on this. And you're going to do the same thing, but in reverse. Yep. Go into advanced, go into responsive, and now you're going to hide it on mobile. And this is what shows up on desktop and tablet. So this, and it doesn't make a difference what order these are in. No. Because it's just the how it's going to be displayed. So that is how you do the responsive. And when you do the um, preview of it, anything that's grayed out isn't going to show up. So you're not going to get a grayed out box over there. It's just not going to display in the actual screen. And this is what the caption would look like. So if you want captions underneath each one of your gallery images or captions underneath any image that you have in your site, you can change that drop down so that that caption will show up. And you can also change it so that it doesn't. Click on the image, go to caption, go to none. So cool. And we're at 11.06, so there's a jillion other responsive layout options. But now that you know how the system works, mm -hmm. you can pretty much play around with it and get it to do what you want it to do. It's, and it's okay that we are um, a little after 11. We started a little after 10, so not a problem. So were there any responsive layout questions, any fiddly settings that people had questions about? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, um, and nothing came in while you were doing your demo. I mean, we did have a cat theme going on, to be fair. I had to close the door for cats issues yeah. dealing with each other. All right, sorry about that. Um, does anybody have any questions? Type in the questions section of your uh, GoToWebinar interface. We can grab them um, now before we wrap things up. Uh, we don't have to end the show uh, just because we hit about an hour of um, present presenting. Um, if you have any questions you want to ask of Amanda about this or anything else, uh, WordPress website related, uh, since you got her here, uh, type into the question section. I think and this is, yeah, go ahead. While you're typing, I did say that I would show what would happen if you had this element or number 66 and how to fix it. Mm, yeah. So, I published that, and now I'm going back into our main dashboard. And now I'm going to go to the list of all the pages that are on the site. And eventually it'll even load. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go into this Elementor 66, and you'll go into Quick Edit. So here you can actually change the title, and we're just going to call it Responsive Awesome. 
So now you change the title, you also have to change the slug. And the slug is what will actually show up in your URL. If you don't change the slug, people would actually have to check to type in um, libraries.ne.gov slash Nebraska City slash Elementor hyphen 66. But instead, we just want them to be able to type in responsive. And then we go to update. Mm -hmm. And now the, the title changed and the slug of what shows up in your, your URL also changed. So that's how you fix it. It's not the end of the world if you forget to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, I think this is a, yeah, no questions came in and that's fine. Um, you all can reach out to Amanda. You know where to find her. Um, if you do start playing around with this yourself on your uh, library's websites and um, if you have any questions or issues with it. Um, I think this is really important. I know a lot of library, a lot of people doing web pages don't. Um, well, I think many people do more so now than they used to think about the fact that people are using different devices. Um, it's not yeah, just yeah. website on a big monitor. Um, on a computer monitor, um, people are using their phones uh, or tablets so much, and this this small screen, <laughs> yeah, you definitely need yeah. something that will um, look not look ridiculous to people out there. Yeah. And just just take a little bit of you know behind the scenes work like this, um, and uh, just to maintain and make it look good. And um, I think we have these great tools now that make it so much easier than it used to be. Yeah. I, mean, I, I I started doing websites when it was HTML coding and you needed to know the code. <laughs> um, yeah. I still do know a lot of those codes, which is great because I can use them to do tweak some things behind the scenes that I know, like, nope, I know the code, let me just dig in there and do it. But if I can use this kind of thing to do it, so much better. <laughs> right, right. I'm definitely on it. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any questions coming in. Um, that's fine. Um, any last words, Amanda, before I pull back and do my wrap up for today? Well, that's about it. It's not too bad. Just hide the stuff you don't want people to see, display the stuff you do want people to see, and change the setting for a different display. Yeah. It's all built in there, ready for you to use it. Yeah. And you'd say there is free and paid versions of the Elementor as well. Yes. So you don't necessarily, you don't have to have to pay for this if you don't, um, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. do a lot of this without having to pay anything extra. And everything that I just demonstrated was under the free version. So that was all free. Right. Right. And the free version of Canva too. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. I am going to pull presenter control to my screen now. There we go. Oh, perfect. All right. And wrap up. So thank you everybody for being here with us this morning. Thank you again, Amanda, for being here. Um, Amanda will be back on um, what is, oh, it's right there on the screen. Uh, June 26th is the next last Wednesday of the month. Awkward to say, but it is what it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, look for um, what her topic will be next um, a month. Um, but you can see you can uh, register right now for it just to get yourself on the list. And then when we do have um, uh, finalized the topic will be, we'll update the description there so you'll know what you'll actually be seeing <laughs> um, or hearing about. And so this is our Encompass Live website. Um, today's show with our upcoming shows, but I was going to show you today. You know, today's show was recorded, as I said. Um, everyone who attended today's show and signed up for today's show, show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Should be by the end of the day tomorrow, very latest. Um, it will be here on our archives um, link here, which is right beneath our um, upcoming shows. Most recent one is at the top of the page. Here's one from last week. And I think we have, yeah, this one had multiple links. We have a link to the recording. Uh, well, for Amanda, we just have a link to the recording. She didn't have any slides this time. But when we do have so presentation of slides, you'll see we'll have a link to that or links to other things that they might want to share out. Um, but then you'll be able to go and watch the recording on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. 
Um, and if there are any other documents, you can watch those. You have those as well. Um, but Amanda's will just hit the link. It'll be up here at the top of the page. Um, and you can watch it at your convenience. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you there is a search feature. So you can search our show archives to see if we've done a show on a particular topic of your interest. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. Um, and that is because, and I'll show you here, this is our full show archives going all the way back to when Encompass Live first premiered. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down. If you can see over here on the right, I've got a lot to scroll to get to the bottom of the page. But this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009, which means we're in our 16th year of the show. And wow. That. That's insane, yeah. <laughs> but um, we have all of our show archives here. So um, pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything you you watch. Um, it'll be right here. This is when these shows are first done. Um, many of the shows we find to watch will stand the test of time, still be good, useful resources, but some things will become old and outdated. Resources or um, services may be completely different or not exist anymore. Uh, people may work at different institutions, different places than when they um, presented for us. So be aware of that as well. Uh, links may be broken. Um, we, so uh, just, just pay attention to the date and, and understand that things may be a little different since then. But this is something that libraries do, keeping things for historical purposes. And we will keep doing that as long as we have some place to host it. And right now, all of our show archives going back to 2009 are on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. So you can always go there and see them. Um, we also have a Facebook page you can see here I've got it open over here uh, so if you do use Facebook give us a like you get notifications here's a reminder to log into today's show um, announcing this week's show letting you people know that the recordings are available so we push that out to our Facebook page and to the Library Commission's Twitter account and Instagram we do promotion using the NCUMP live hashtag, a little abbreviation of our uh, show name. So if you like to use any of those various social medias, social medias, <laughs> you can um, follow us there to keep up on what we're doing. Um, we also here for locally for um, Nebraska libraries and staff, we do have a mailing list um, as well that I push these out to a general mailing list for Nebraska staff. I just wanted to show you too, you look at the Nebraska Libraries on the web um, website. If you go to the Nebraska Library Commission's web homepage, nlc.nebraska.gov, I believe if we type in, uh, let's see, ah, you just have Nebraska Libraries. Um, Nebraska Library, you know, that's other libraries. It's really nice libraries on the web. Uh, that's just a list of our library sites. We'll have to see. I thought if you typed in there it is on the web. Yeah, that's our um you get to uh the website to get started if you if you are a Nebraska library, um a Nebraska public library and need a website. This is where to go for all the resources and information and everything and to um, contact, um, get in contact with Amanda about doing that. Yeah. All right, so that wraps it up for today's show. Um, I am, you see here is our upcoming schedule is um, not all filled in, but I am working on getting things, I've got things confirmed and gonna be on the calendar. So I just wanna mention things here, obviously pre-suite tech, end of next month. Um, on June 19th, it is Juneteenth, and so the Nebraska Library Commission has closed for the um, federal slash state holiday, so we will not have an Encompass Live on that day. Um, but I do have things scheduled for June 5th and June 12th. June 5th will be, and I'm so look for the cal on the calendar for when we um, I'm finalizing descriptions for these sessions. But June 5th will be a session about um, teen library services, all about teens in their library. And on June 12th will be about being a library strategist or doing strategic planning for your library. So um, keep your eyes open for those to have their full session descriptions, everything on here. Um, hopefully uh, today I'll have um, one of them up so that you can actually get registered for them. But I do have things scheduled. I'm just going still back and forth with the presenters on finalizing how they want everything to be uh, displayed on the um, our webpage here. 
So that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you again, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you again, Amanda. Good to see you. Um, we'll see you in a month. <laughs> Back on the show. And I hope we'll see some of you all on a future episode of Zen Compass Live as well. Bye-bye. <laughs>